Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Bill. We're going to be in the Starfinder core rulebook for this video. We are going to do zero level Technomancer spells. And then the next time I do a video, we'll be doing level one uh, Mystic spells and then level one Technomancer spells. So that's the Mystic List. The Technomancer spell list. Okay, the zero level spells we'll be looking at are Dancing Lights, Daze, Detect Affliction, Detect Magic, Energy Ray, Ghost Sound, Mending, Psychokinetic Hand, Telepathic Message, Token Spell, Transfer Charge. So the first one is Dancing Lights. Interesting. Okay, Control Undead. Death Ward. Ah, that's what's going on. There we go. Dancing Lights. Casting times one standard action. Range is medium, 100 feet plus 10 feet per level. You can create up to four lights. Duration is one minute, so 10 rounds. Um... You create up to four lights that resemble small headlights or flashlights. The dancing lights must stay within 10-foot radius area in relation to each other, but otherwise move as you desire, forward or back, up or down, straight or turning corners, or the like. The lights can move up to 100 feet per round. A light winks out if its distance between you and it exceeds the spell's range. You can only have one Dancing Lights spell active at a time. If you cast a spell while another casting is still in effect, the previous casting is dispelled. Okay, so Dancing Lights always think of, since you can move them around, as being very effective in going down dark corridors and pretty much scouting with the light. Next is Days. Uh... Standard action to cast, range is 25 feet plus 5 feet per two levels. Targets one humanoid creature of challenge rating 3 or lower. Duration one round. Saving throw will negates. Spell resistance, yes. This spell short circuits the mind of a humanoid creature with a challenge rating of 3 or lower so that it is dazed, unable to take actions, but take no penalty to AC. Humanoids of challenge rating 4 or higher are not affected. After a creature has been dazed by the spell, it is immune to it for one minute. Next is Detect Affliction. Detect Affliction. Standard action to cast. Range is 25 feet plus 5 feet per two level. One creature or object is the target. Duration's instantaneous, so you cast it and it takes effect immediately. Uh, spell resistance, yes. No saving throw. You determine whether a creature or object has been poisoned, is diseased, is cursed, or is suffering a similar affliction. If the target is poisoned or diseased, you automatically detect that fact and can determine the exact type of poison or disease with a successful DC-20 intelligence or wisdom check. If you are trained in life science or medicine, depending on the nature of the poison or disease, you can attempt a DC-20 check of that skill if you fail your wisdom or intelligence check. If the target is cursed or suffering from a similar affliction, you must succeed at a DC-20 intelligence or wisdom check to determine that fact. 
you can then determine the exact nature of the curse with a successful DC 25 mysticism check. Okay. Detect magic. Detect magic. Casting time on standard action. Range is 60 foot. It's cone shaped from you. Duration, concentration, up to one minute per level. So as long as you concentrate, it's active, but it can only be active one minute per your caster level. You detect all magic spells, effects, items, and objects, including those on or affecting creatures you can see, as well as hybrid items in the area. You can't detect magical traps in this way, as they are created with additional magic that wards them from this common spell. Each round you concentrate on the same area, you can determine if one magic source you detect is from a spell, magic item, or effect in the caster level or item level of the effect. You can't determine if there are magic sources in the areas you can't see. If there was a magic source in the area at one time, but that has since expired. So you can't track somebody that's been casting magic in an area. Um, because you just won't see that magic. <laughs> okay. Tech magic is about the same as it is in every game I've played. Energy Ray. Energy Ray. Casting time, one standard action. Range close, 25 feet plus 5 feet per two levels. One creature or object is the target. Duration is instantaneous. Saving throw, none. Spell resistance, yes. When you cast this spell, choose acid, cold, electricity, or fire. The spell gains that descriptor. You fire a ray at the target, and you must make a range attack against the EAC. On a hit, the ray deals 1d3 damage of the chosen energy type. Okay. So it's just a an easy zero level spell for damaging. Ghost Sound. Ghost Sound is always a fun one out of D&D. &D. Ghost sound, it's an illusion, standard action, range is close, 25 feet plus 5 feet per two levels. Durations, one round per level. Saving throw, uh, will to disbelieve it. Spell resistance, no. You create a volume of sound that rises, falls, recedes, approaches, or remains fixed. You choose what type of sound this spell creates when casting it and cannot thereafter change the sound's basic character. The volume of sound created can produce as much noise as 20 normal humans. Thus, you can create shouting, singing, talking, marching, running, or walking sounds, as well as sounds of battle or small explosions. You can make noises that sound like machines, the general chatter of distant conversation, or the roar of an alien predator but you can't make specific sounds such as intelligible speech or the exact hum of a particular starship's engine. Interesting. Mending. Uh, casting time is 10 minutes to cast Mending, and Mending's one of those spells you would want to use when you had downtime anyway, so that makes sense. Range, 10 feet. Target one object up to one bulk, which is how they're tracking weight in this game. Duration, instantaneous. Saving throw, will negates. Spell resistance, yes. Uh, it's harmless, and it's only if the object would have spell resistance or a saving throw. This spell repairs damaged objects and constructs, restoring 1d4 hit points. If the object has the broken condition, this condition is removed. If the object is restored to at least half of its original hit points. 
All the pieces of an object must be present for this spell to function. A construct can benefit from this spell only once per day. Magic items can be repaired by this spell, but magic items that are destroyed don't have their magical abilities restored. This spell doesn't reverse effects that warp or otherwise transmute the items, but it can still repair damage dealt to such items. So interesting. Psychokinetic Hand. Psychokinetic Hand. Uh, casting times one standard action. Range is close, 25 feet plus 5 feet for two levels. Target one unattained or unattended object of no more than 10 pounds or one bulk. Duration Concentration. Uh, you point your finger at the target object, gaining the ability to lift it and move it at will from a distance. As a move action, you can propel the object as far as 15 feet in any direction, though the spell ends if the distance between you and the object ever exceeds the spell's range. You can't perform complex operations such as firing a gun or using a computer, but you can shut a mechanical door or lid and work simple buttons to open or close automated doors or trigger an alarm. So those are the limits of that. So that's pretty cool. It reminds me of Mage Hand and the many uses you can use it for. Telepathic message. Send a short telepathic message. Okay. Cool. Telepathic message. It's a standard action to cast. The range is medium, 100 feet plus 10 feet per level. Target up to one creature per level. Duration 10 minutes per level. You can send a short telepathic message and hear simple telepathic replies. Any living creature within 10 feet of you or an intended recipient also uh, receives your telepathic message. If it succeeds, a DC 25 perception check. You must be able to see or hear each recipient. The creatures that receive the message can reply telepathically, but no more than a single message can be sent each round, and each message cannot exceed 10 words. A technomancer casting this spell can also use it to send a message to a computer or a construct with the technological subtype if the receiving target is designed to receive messages. Cool. It's a good way to communicate uh, without making noise, and a lot of stealth missions that could be very useful. And token spell. Standard action. Range is 10 feet. Target effect or area. See the text. Duration is one hour. Token spells are often some of the first minor changes that spellcasters produce when they begin experimenting with magic. Once cast, token spell enables the, you to perform simple magical effects for one hour. The effects are minor and have severe limitations. You can slowly lift one item of light bulk. You can alter items in a one-foot cube each round, coloring, cleaning, soiling, cooling, warming, or flavoring them. You can create small objects, but they look artificial and are extremely fragile. They can't be used as tools or weapons. You can illuminate an object to shed dim light in a 30-foot radius. Token spell lacks the power to duplicate any other spell effect. Any actual change to an object beyond moving, cleaning, or soiling it persists for only one hour. So if you wanted to, say, hide the fact that you were there or that you took something, you could use the token spell to uh, make the dust that was around the object all the same on the table instead. Just an example.
and the fact that you can use it to create light means that you don't need a light spell that just illuminates something. Uh, so that's a cool addition. So this spell reminds me of Prestidigitation from Pathfinder and D&D uh, &D, with the light spell combined in it. Transfer Charge is the last uh, spell on the list. Transfer Charge. Casting time is one standard action. Range is touch. Two objects of the same type. Duration instantaneous. Saving throw fortitude negates. Spell resistance, yes. You can transfer any number of charges from one battery to another battery or from one power cell to another power cell. You can only transfer charges using two objects of the exact same type. Two batteries of the same size, two identical power cells, or the like. Your transfer charges from the source object to the receiving object. You must declare how many charges you are transferring before casting the spell. If you transfer more charges from the source than the receiving item can hold, the receiving item must succeed a fortitude saving throw or take 1d6 electrical damage. This spell provides no knowledge of how many charges a receiving item can safely hold but you can choose to transfer fewer charges than the maximum allowed to reduce the risk. So that's pretty cool that you could recharge your stuff that way. You could also, if you sneak around and can cast that quietly, you could take charges from enemy weapons before you engage them in combat. So that's pretty cool. Now the following spells are the ones that I would pick at the beginning. I'm assuming you only get three. I'd have to look at the class to know if I get more. Uh, at the very beginning, I would pick a uh, token spell because of its versatility. Um, energy ray, so I'd have an attack. And then uh, dancing lights. So that way I have a means to scout bigger areas without having to be there with the light source. Those would be the ones that I'd pick at the beginning. And then from there, I just expand into the others. Because all of them seem good. You just energy raise your only real attack spell out of the zero levels. And it, that gives you something to cast when you're out of your first level spells. Well, hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. And look forward to my other videos. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. Until we all game again, guys.